Good evening all, this is uh, 26 Bond, or Rob, this is the thread response to uh, Lazarus's thread uh, of the top albums of the 80s, so here is my uh, video response to that. Uh, my first one, from 1980, is I believe uh, one of the first records ever released in the decade, I believe this came out on the 1st of January 1980, this is of course Rush. And permanent Waves, which is one of their best LPs in my opinion. Um, this is the original cover as well with the Dewey uh, Beats Truman uh, headline on the um, newspaper, which was uh, subsequently banned on later pressings. Um, a great album. Um, contains one of Rush's best love songs, The Spirit of Radio, uh, and just some great tracks. Um, fantastic records, that's my pick for 1980. 81 Diary of a Madman by Ozzy Osbourne. Um, I'm a big fan of Randy Rhodes' guitar playing. This was the last album that Randy Rhodes unfortunately uh, played on. This is an original Jet LP pressing from the UK, but it's just fantastic music from start to finish. Uh, you Can't Kill Rock and Roll, Believer, and of course the title track, Diary of a Madman. It's just fantastic playing, and anyone into rock or metal definitely needs this LP in their collection. 82 was a really hard year. Uh, there was a lot of great records released then, but my personal favourite was this album by Kiss. This is Creatures of the Night, which was their last album um, in makeup up until 99 Psycho Circus. Fantastic record with a real bombastic drum production featuring the late great Eric Carr on drums. Uh, just a fantastic record uh, from a fantastic year for metal. So, Creatures of the Night by Kiss. Uh, fantastic album. 83, once again very hard, but I've gone for, this might be a surprise to a lot of you, an underrated uh, album from uh, a very rated band. This is Black Sabbath, The Real Fathers of Metal and this is their 83 release with Ian Gillan on vocals. This is Born Again and uh, it's just got some fantastic tracks on there featuring my favourite Sabbath track, uh, Zero the Hero. So a lot of people slag this album off when it was released. It does sound a bit different to uh, a lot of their material, but it's just struck a chord with me, this album, and I'm um, really, really fond of it. So that's my 83 choice. The 80s are such a hard decade to sort of narrow down in years one album, but for 84, I've gone with this, which is Wasp. It's their debut album. It's a Japanese pressing of that. Um, fantastic record. Uh, which led to them being managed by Andy Taylor and Rod Smord, who managed Iron Maiden. Um, just a great album. Every song is a winner on this one. Love Machine, Sleeping in the Fire, um, The Flame. It's just, if anyone, has, if anyone would like to check Wasp out, this is definitely the one to start with. Um, probably their best record, and certainly, in my opinion, one of the best of 84, if not the best. 85 I've gone with a live album I just couldn't decide but you need a bit of Maiden so I've gone for this which is probably their best album of the 80s as it includes all their greatest songs from the 80s um, this is Live After Death yep mine's got the booklet and mine's got the merchandise sheet as well um, in terms of packaging one of the best live LPs of all time uh, and needs no introduction. Any rock fan that doesn't have this in, collect in their collection needs shooting. It's just a great record. So Live After Death incorporating Maiden's first five classic 80s EP, uh, LPs. 86, this was an easy one. Rain and Blood by Slayer. Um, it's just defined thrash metal. So everyone's talked about this to the to the death really but this is one of the greatest records ever made in my opinion so that's my 86 choice 87 i'm a big fan of death metal and this is another groundbreaking release uh from the much missed chuck shawdine and this is his band death 
This is their debut album, Scream Bloody Gore. Uh, this is a repress on Back on Black, red vinyl. Um, this is all you really need to know about death metal. If you buy one death metal LP, get this one. It's the original and probably one of the best. And it's certainly my favourite LP of 87. 88. King Diamond, ex-Merciful Fate vocalist. This is his uh, third solo album. This is the, uh, the, the album Them from 88 featuring Andy LaRocque on lead guitar. Uh, it's a concept album. It's a fantastic story. It's genuinely scary. Uh, the original pressing came with a booklet as well, uh, which gave you a lot of backstory about um, King. And it's just a fantastic record with great musicianship. Certainly something for, for you vinyl collectors to check out and try and pick up. It's well worth a listen. As is part two of this story, which is called Conspiracy. Uh, which is a very popular album. I think it was his best-selling record, which was released in 1990. But in my opinion, this was an excellent album for 88. And finally, for 89, this is Slowly We Rock by Obituary. Um, if death started death metal, uh, these guys certainly moved it on a level. Uh, it's utterly, utterly fierce and unrelenting from start to finish. From fast songs to slow, sludgy songs um, featuring the vocals of John Tardy, who redefined uh, metal singing, basically, on one album. This is it. Everybody needs to try and get hold of this one and listen to it at least once because it's unlike anything you've ever heard before. So there you go. There's my picks for the 80s. Hope, hope you've all enjoyed it. And uh, fantastic Fred from Lazarus and... Uh, all good stuff. I look forward to having a look at some more video responses uh, to this thread. Thanks a lot.